What's going on, guys? So, I finally got my hands on the Omega X Swatch Moon Swatch. Today, I want to talk about the story behind the Moon Swatch, how I got my hands on one, and what it's like to wear, as well as give an update now on my unholy trinity of watches that I've been building. So, roll intro. And let's get started. So in the middle of March, my dad texted me and said, have you seen the Omega and Swatch collaboration? That seemed a little interesting to me because I didn't know that Omega and Swatch would collaborate on anything because Omega is a more high-end brand and Swatch is cheaper watches, both Swiss made and Omega is owned by the Swatch group, but still it seemed like an odd collaboration. I Googled it and what I found was incredible. It was a collection of 11 watches based on the Omega Speedmaster Moon Watch but with each one having its own planetary or moon reference. So I kept looking into it, realized that I live about two hours away from one of the stores where it was being released. It was being released in a limited number of stores worldwide. So I told my wife about it and she agreed that we could drive up there and check it out. The store hours normally have it opening at 10 o'clock, but I wanted to be early so I could get in line and hopefully be one of the few that would get the watch didn't know if it was going to be limited, if it was going to be numbered. All I knew is that it was going to be released in stores and not online. We arrived at the store at 9 o'clock and there was a pretty decent line outside the store. I was maybe 70 people behind. I waited about 10 minutes and then somebody from the store came out and said that all of the watches had sold out hours ago. They had opened early that day and people had been lining up since 7pm the day before. The line that had built was just a new line of people who hadn't heard this news yet and all had to fill out a paper with their name and their email address and they would be contacted when they could eventually get their hands on a watch. So we drove the two hours back home, disappointed. There were rumors that the watch would be released online on March 28th, however March 28th came and went and that was not the case. I went from checking every single day to checking every few days to finally kind of giving up until one day, a couple weeks ago, my dad texted me and said, it's time. He had been in contact with one of the people at the store and had been waiting for his name to come up on the list. And our names came up and we drove up there again. It was kind of like a shady deal happening. Multiple people were walking into the store and asking about the Moon Swatch collection and all being turned away empty handed. And I had to keep waiting for everybody to clear out so I could continue with my transaction. But I walked out with the Mercury edition for my dad and the Moon edition for myself. So let's take a look at the watch. Now the original Moon Swatch was issued to astronauts that were going to be on the moon and this is the first watch that made it on the moon. The strap is a Velcro strap that's made to be resizable so that the astronauts could fit it over their suits. The particular edition of the Moon Watch that this one references is the Dot Over 90 edition, as you'll see on the bezel. The original Moon Watch was made in stainless steel. However, the Moon Swatch collection are all in a bioceramic plastic case. This is a quartz movement in this watch, but it is still a Swiss made quartz. The markers and hands have Super Luminova, but it's not the greatest Super Luminova. It does tend to fade pretty quickly. It's really, really light on the wrist, and a lot of people do say that they find the straps to be uncomfortable. However, I've found no issues with it, and I really like the way it looks, so I think I'm going to keep that on there. The Moon Edition has a kind of a dull gray case that, in photographs, they tried to make look more like the original stainless, but in person, it is a little bit dull. However, it goes well with the black and does still create a very nice looking watch. The chronograph subdials are a little bit off from where they would be on the original Omega Speedmaster, but they have to fit that way for this movement to work. So what do I think about it? Well, after months of waiting, I'm so glad I finally got my hands on it. It's not the highest quality watch in the world. What it is, is an interesting take on a piece of history, as well as part of a huge hype train created by Omega and Swatch. This got people who weren't into watches, people who were into streetwear, and then people who are into watches all excited about one thing. And there's really no other watches that have been able to do that. There are some watches that have got the watch community very hyped up and sold out pretty instantly in this same sort of price range. And I've talked about that briefly before as my building my unholy trinity. 
which will be my Cassio that I've shown off before, this Omega Moon Swatch that I have now, and the last piece is going to be a Timex Q. I haven't picked which one yet, but that will complete my unholy trinity of the three watches that created a ton of hype in the watch world and sold out pretty instantly and were pretty hard to get your hands on at first. It is still really hard to get your hands on a moon swatch today. As I said, there were tons of people coming into the store as I was buying mine or calling the store and walking away empty handed. My situation with the store that I bought mine from is actually small in comparison to some of the other stores. I heard that the store in Vegas had lines two days ahead of time and some of the stores in Europe had 5,000 plus people waiting to queue outside. So. It's really cool that I finally was able to get my hands on it, and it's not a limited watch. It won't be selling it online, but anybody who does want one will eventually be able to get their hands on one once stock increases. All right, that's all I got for today. So if you enjoy this video, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them down in the comment section below. And with all that out of the way, have a great one.